Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to build an LLM agent using LangGraph. This is going to be a fully functional real world agent that's capable of getting current information from the internet and solving multi-step problems and tasks. Recently, I put out a video on building LLM agents completely from scratch using no framework at all, just Python. If you're interested in seeing how these agents work under the hood, then I put a link to the video in the description. These LLM agents have been exploding in popularity recently and understanding how they work is a huge advantage, whether or not you're developing them yourself or you're just selecting an agent for your particular use case. We're going to build this agent in Google Colab. As I said, we're going to build it using the LangGraph framework. This is one of the most commonly used frameworks for building agent systems and multi-agent systems. And what's a little different about LangGraph is that it uses a graph-based structure. This makes it useful for building complex AI workflows as well as agents. And we'll see in just a minute here what that looks like. The typical React autonomous LLM agent is structured like this. So we have the user who will provide a question or a task to the LLM. And the LLM is gonna look at that request from the user, create a plan, and then go about executing that plan starting with the first step. And it's gonna be able to call on tools which allow it to interact with the environment, which is really the outside world. One of the tools we're gonna to be using will be internet search. So we'll be able to get real current information from the internet. We could also provide it with other tools to get information from other sources and actually take direct actions in the real world. Whatever action is taken in the real world, information is then provided back to the LLM and the LLM then factors that into its current plan and then decides what it needs to do next. And this process is going to continue in a loop until such time as the LLM decides that it has completed its task and then it's going to, or if some other ending criteria is met. When I said before that LangGraph used a graph based workflow, how that would look here is you would have essentially two nodes in this graph. So the LLM would be one node, the tools. The tool call would be another node. And then there would be two edges. There would be a normal edge, which would connect the tool call, which would go from the tool call back to the LLM. And there would also be a conditional edge. And that's where the LLM would decide whether or not to make another tool call or simply to end and return its output. The first thing we need to do is install our libraries. Next, I'm going to use get pass to handle the API keys. We're going to need two API keys. We're going to need an API key for OpenAI in order to access the LLM. And for this, you can just go to platform.openai.com. You can create an account or log in and get your API key and then just add it here. And then we're also going to need a Tavili API key. So for that, you can just go to tavili.com. You can sign up for free. They have a generous free tier and get your API key. And what Tavili is, is this is a search engine API. So we're going to use this as our tool for being able to search and get information from the internet. Once you have that, you can enter it here. And then next we're going to import the chat open AI model from Langchain. The next thing we're going to do is create our tools. Now in the previous video that I did on agents, I created two functions that we used as tools. The first of these was web search, which takes a text query as input, searches the web using the Tavili API, and then returns the result. And the second was calculator that just takes in a math expression and then performs the calculation. In LangGraph, the way that I turn these functions into tools is I just import this tool decorator, and then I add the decorator before both of my functions. And then of course, I also have to import the Tavili client. Great. And now the next thing I need to do is bind those tools that I just created to my LLM. So to do that, I'm going to use the bind tools method, and I'll create this new object LLM with tools. Next, we create our nodes in the graph. So just like I showed before, we're going to have two nodes. We're going to have a node for the LLM call. And we're also going to have a node for the tool call. So we can see here that the LLM call node takes in as input messages state. So this is just a record of the conversation or all the interactions that we're having with the LLM. 
And then we have our tool node here that will take the messages that are returned from our LLM. It'll go through, look for any tool calls. It will invoke those tool calls, and then it will append the results to the tool message, which is then sent back to the LLM call. We will create a conditional edge. So this is the edge here where the LLM can decide whether or not to make a tool call or to simply end and return its output. And now we can actually build our agent. We're going to create an instance of the estate graph, which we imported from LangGraph. Then we're going to add the two nodes, our LLM call node and the environment node, which is the tool node. We're going to add our edges, which includes the normal edge as well as the conditional edge. And then we'll compile and create the agent. Now that this is done, we can visualize the structure of the agent. So we can see that the user here will send a message to the LLM. The LLM will then call, make an action, which is call a tool, get information or do something to the environment. Information will be sent back to the LLM, and then it will decide whether or not to continue the loop or to end and return its output. And now we're ready to test our agent. So I can add my message here, and I'm just gonna do something similar to what I did in the previous video. I'll ask, what is the sum of the current temperature in Paris and Berlin? Now, again, this is a very simple question, obviously, but the reason why I'm asking it is because it requires one real-time information and two multiple steps. The agent has to get the current temperature for two cities and then carry out a mathematical calculation. So let's see how well it performs. Once this is finished running, it will print out the result. So we can see here, human message. I asked, what is the sum of the current temperature of Paris and Berlin? We can see here that it made two tool calls to our web search tool, one for the current temperature of Paris, one for the current temperature of Berlin. That information was sent back to the LLM. The LLM then reviewed the information that it had, which is the current temperature in those two cities. And then it added those two temperatures together. What I wanna do now is upgrade this agent and make it more practical and useful. So I'm gonna go up to our nodes. And here we have the node for the LLM call. And it's in this node that we can specify the system message. So the system message is the prompt that you're providing to the agent or the model that's gonna direct its overall behavior. Right now, I'm only telling it that it's a helpful assistant. That's really not giving it that much. So I'm actually going to take this out and, and I'm going to create a new system message, something that provides far more detailed instructions. So here I'm telling it that it's a highly capable research assistant and writer. And essentially its goal is to take a topic from the user, do some research using its, its web search tool, create a summary, and then review that summary and make improvements to it. This is the original task that I was giving it before. I'm actually going to remove this and I'm going to create a new task that instructs the model to research and summarize the most important US economic indicators released recently within the last two months into a 500 word report. So we can submit this to the model. Great, and this result took about 25 seconds. So let's see what the agent did here. We can see that it made a couple of tool calls for economic indicators for February and March of 2025. And then it produced this summary that covers a lot of the key indicators that we would expect and just goes into some detail about what happened, some analysis. And at the bottom, there are concluding thoughts. So this is all information that it got from the search, from the search queries, all current data from, from the internet. And considering that we were able to put this, this agent together with just a few lines of code fairly quickly, I would say that it did a good job. Obviously, this is a very simple agent example, but we're able to do this in just a few minutes with just a few lines of code. There are countless ways that we can expand on this agent and improve it, and I look forward to doing that in the future. So if you have any ideas in that regard, then please drop a comment. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.